hello everybody, welcome back from the holidays. I haven't seen you think since before the winter holidays. 20th of December, of course. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah, likewise. Um, uh, Rich, how you been? It has been crazy busy? It's been a little crazy today. Today was yeah. an extraordinary special day. Oh. <laughs> you know, here. You're here. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, well, um, no public comment. So we will go straight to minutes, which I am just now reading. Uh, I'll need a second. Okay, um, does anyone want to make a motion to accept the minutes? Motion. Second. Do we have enough time to read, Jay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, minutes have been approved as they stand. Uh, did everyone get a chance to look at their to-do list? I know you guys checked your main task off. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that. Um, Todd, I would say your main to do is to circle back to Ryan O'Donnell about getting on the agenda. Okay. Um, that's it. All right, and Richard, I would say your main to do is to update your thank you. How's that going? Uh, not very slow. <laughs> okay. I'm actually still working on Tree City USA and waiting for some my own numbers to come through. I'm sorry, I didn't work on that today. Don't worry about it, it's fine. I, I, I included um, the uh, Folks at Village Hill, which did about nine thousand dollars worth of work. Wow, mm -hmm. good. Yeah, so great. Yeah, wow. For city trees, right? Yes, yes, city yes. Trees. yes. Yeah. city trees. So I'm just trying to yeah. get as accurate as possible. Yeah, so and and the um, the chestnut tree project too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, while you're all, uh, maybe you could ask your daughter if she has any other volunteer hours related to that project that we can include. So, sure. so I can include the planting part of it, but I yeah, think she doesn't need like an administrative. Yeah, and, and for dollar value, you could like really up it there on the cost of the <laughs> tree. Right, right, right. okay. Thank you. Um, sure. All right. I'm sure you have a million other things on your to do list, but we can talk about that when we get to your tree board report. Uh, chair report. So I've got a, a number of things. One is Rich and I met with Cooley Dickinson Hospital grounds manager, which I will actually bump the summary of that to when we talk about our 2018 planting plan. Um, another is that Rick Harper, do you all know Rick Harper? He's over at UMass Extension Extension Service. He's definitely in their like, uh, forestry program. I don't think he's in extension anymore. He got a full time, full -time position faculty yeah. position. Yeah. Anyway, he he uh, teaches an urban forestry class, <coughs> and he approached me, asking if I'd be willing to um, meet with his students, his spring semester students, for an hour when they make a field trip to Northampton on hmm. February 28th. I just sent Rich. I just sent you a something something about this. Let me just get the date right. It's uh. February 28th at 1.30. So he's gonna come here, and um, I invite any of you to be part of this. It's, fit, which is a Wednesday at 1.30. It's, um, it's not a meeting day for us. I, w I actually asked him if he could come on a meeting day and have his kids just come to the tree commission meeting, but that didn't work out for him. 
So um, I will probably talk in a summary kind of way about the sort of things we're doing similar to the presentation that Rich and I made to the Tree Ward Association. And if they want to tour anything in particular, I'd be happy to show them and I'd love your ideas about what I could show them. Might anyone be interested in being part of that? Yeah, you definitely yeah, sorry, Great. Yeah. I might be able to do it. Let me double check a few things. Great. I, I think okay. If it would be helpful. Not I think it would be helpful. Okay. It's always just, you know, it's energizing for them right. to see when it's a community effort, right. not just one person being a talking head. Okay. One? It's at 1.30. Here. Here, here to, to be determined, here in Northampton? Got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're not, like, reserving the, the here in Northampton. That was, uh, that was one thing. And then uh, my final uh, chair report is that I met yesterday with <clears throat> someone who approached me personally. She doesn't live in North Hi, Molly. Hi. I'm so glad you could make it. Uh, the last thing in my chair report, Molly, I just mentioned that on, at 1.30 on February 28th, um, a faculty member from UMass forestry program is bringing his urban forestry students to come and learn a little bit about what's going on in North Asia. So if you want to be part of that, you can. And then the last thing is I met with someone yesterday, a citizen of Hatfield, but someone who is in Northampton a lot, and she wants to she wants to donate um, money for trees. I don't know, I don't think this is we're talking huge amounts of money here, but but the concept that she proposed was an interesting one, and it made me think, wow, if we ever put together a memorial slash legacy giving program, we could expand it even further, because what she was describing is a sense of personal guilt that her family travels and uses fossil fuels, and she'd like to do a local offset, mm -hmm. carbon offset. So I thought that was kind of a cool concept to offer people a, um, a way to offset their, their impact on a very tangible, extremely tangible, high public benefit way. So I would love to propose um, that as we look at this, as we shape a legacy program, and I know that's right now in Marilyn's hands, and sh I don't know how she's moving on it, but I would love to actually give people a whole menu of options for why they want to give. You know, in memory of somebody, in honor of somebody, um, as a carbon offset for, for whatever. So that's my third report, and um, I, I can try to communicate some of that directly to Marilyn. Any thoughts about that? That's great. Sounds good. My only thought about the donation is, um, you know, sh this is, I don't know if this is the right way to go or not, but. Should we be thinking about steering the donation to Tree Northampton because eventually to get uh, um, setback planted? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a thought. Um, I mean, we still have plenty of public sites. We have. Right. We're going to have upward of three thousand as soon as we, once we remove all the trees that are slated to be removed. We've got two thousand sites and mm -hmm. another thousand of trees that need to come down. Mm -hmm. So I do think that we, we still have plenty to work on, on a, for the public, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, I think that partnership is always a good thing, and so we can, we can look at a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. Rich? Hold on a second. Uh, just a question, how much was she looking to donate? I don't know. She didn't say. So, so one of the other things that I was thinking about is that in a conversation with Rob, when people when people donate money, it would be interesting to actually have the. And this is just kind of coming coming on from my head, but I don't know. It'd be interesting to have them donate the money. So, for example, they could actually buy uh, immature tree whips, and we could give them, or they could. We could have John and Amherst actually grow them for us. Mm -hmm. So actually, they're not really donating. They're don not donating the money then we can actually take the donated trees. If you donate money, it has to go in front of the city council. Bless you. Oh. Oh. Um, but wouldn't it cost us to have um, Amherst Nursery raise those there trees? There probably would be some kind of small cost associated with it, but it built into a contract. Okay. 
because eventually I think you, we want to we want to see if it's possible to purchase you know uh, immature tree whips and actually have John grow them and harvest them mm -hmm. in five years okay. instead of us having our own nursery. Yeah, I thought it was the opposite, Rich, that people can give money to the city, but when we give in-kind things, it has to go before city council. No, in-kind things I can take anything up to twenty-five thousand. Oh, okay, all right. So it's the money okay. that I can't take. So yeah, we'll have to get down to in the weeds on, on the details of this, but the concept I think is compelling in a town where we have this disconnect between people who are like do good green people, but who travel by air and and by car all the time, burning tons of fossil fuel. And at least this allows them to. I mean, you know, when you donate to some of these organizations in the Amazon or whatever, by the time the money filters down to the actual project, you know, there are so many hands that has passed through an administrative fee. So. This, you, you can see the direct impact in the, and the administration is relatively light. So, all right, well, I didn't want to get too too much into that because this is just wrapped up in the chair's report, but I, I just wanted to throw that out as a, as a concept. Um, that's it for chair reports. Um, so I briefly mentioned before, um, still working on Tree City USA. I hope to have that wrapped up by the beginning of next week. Um, we're uh, still uh, doing, we're still actually doing tree work now that the snow has kind of gone, so we're actually back to doing tree work, doing tree rolls and uh, trying to catch up on our some tree trims. Um, all the stump grinding that we did is completed. Uh, as you know, we planted 248 trees last year. We've done 80 removals, which is up from 66 the previous year. Um, and we did 100 uh, large trims. And we did a bunch of small tree trains, which I don't have a total number on, but uh, probably all together with the, probably were about 150 trims altogether, to 200, somewhere in there, just not exactly sure. Wait for the other numbers to come in. Um, <coughs> this is, uh, this document got finalized. Oh, Molly, sorry. Um, Do you have more spare copies of that? Oh yeah, I have I made a hundred of them. I, I'd like a couple right. more. Sure. I could sh share them with key people. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. I'll take four more. Thanks. So, um, some just some minor changes. Um, so, uh, the mayor's recommendation was uh, putting the city seal on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, just adjusting the cover a little bit, uh, making it so it wasn't recommended by by yeah. uh, recommended mm. to him sort of felt as if uh, mm. this is just a, you know, a guideline yeah. just use it as a guideline yeah. so, um, <clears throat> and then uh, Alicia also added a table of contents great because we're going to continue to mm. hopefully add to this or take away from this document and then Alicia is presently working she and I have been working on uh, a whole bunch of uh, documents to go on the back that talk about uh, MGL chapter 87 uh, our local tree ordinance that we have, uh, tree ordinance, and also tree uh, protection um, during construction, but what uh, to do's and not to do's. So this will be a nice document because it's actually going to be, you know, a lot. Of, the majority of everything we talk about, or at least in my enforcement and things, will be encapsulated in one document, which would be pretty nice. So, and then uh, Lily, did you want to talk about uh, the meeting we have with Wayne about the, or you have something, Zach? I was going to wrap that into the planting okay. thing. So that's kind of what I've been, kind of what I've been up to, meeting with Lily, yeah. the gentleman from uh, CDH. Yeah. So, and um, I met with Rob yesterday briefly just to kind of go over some of the plant material that's available um, at Amherst. So we can talk about that afterwards. This rolls into that other uh, okay. conversation. Good. All right. Well, then I'll move straight on. So just uh, so the next steps though would be to. Um, have someone get to the Planning Commission and the City Council with an ordinance to reference this on the zoning and uh, the regulation change in the planning report. So, so that's my, I have to, now that this is finalized, I'm going to give Wayne a hard copy plus also send it to him electronically. Um, and I need to have another probably face to face conversation with him about just doubling back and making sure that this gets moved forward. The mayor was all for it. He felt there was no reason why this couldn't be the present document that uh, the whole city uses. Okay. So, 
Good. Okay, so you feel like you've got that covered. You don't need his support at all for this. I don't think so. I mean, if I run into some issues, I'll let you know. And okay. Go from there. Okay. Um, and go ahead and issues. Okay. Good. Nice job. Yeah. Yay! I, I know yeah. it's done, 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 done. Oh, yeah. So then, what I'm going to end up doing is when the addendums <laughs> come in, yeah. we'll take the books back, okay. or, and I will add because I have the ability to cut the sheets to fit these binders, okay. and we'll oh. just add nice. the new table of contents with the. Okay. Right. Okay. PDF version on the website. Oh yeah. Uh, we Karen, can Karen is Karen is working on that. She's okay. been doing a lot of stuff to our website, but she will she will get it on there. The other thing I didn't bring with me is that we did get our our signs uh, as well. It's uh, free trees to good homes. Mm -hmm. So that is they're in my office, but I had too many things to carry. So we have those as well. Plus we have um, you can write on them and just reuse them. Uh, Marcus Brain is going to get me some stickers to actually go over them. So you can just keep on reading. I got a, uh, I got a hundred of them. You just keep using them. So we can actually use those anywhere. We can put them in the tree belt. We can put them all over the place. It's just free advertising. Yeah. You know, they're not really. I mean, it is sort of geared towards setback claims, but I think it's really uh, more geared toward just awareness in general. Yeah. Because people, can... people see trees pop up and like, oh, over those yeah. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. Now we'll be able to put some, uh, cool. put some information uh, with the tree. I could definitely put one on my Elm Street property, which has high visibility. Yep. In fact, I want a setback tree there. Okay. That's another matter. All right. Um, should we just dive into this 2018 planting plan? So uh, once again, zooming out, our goal <laughs> is to have an order in that actually reflects particular sites throughout the city where, where we have targeted planting. And um, that deadline is fast approaching. Right, Rich? You want to get it in? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking if we can actually put uh, a quote together sometime in February, the beginning of March would be good. Okay. Um, I'm talking with Rob. Um, John from Merch Nursery has kind of uh, changed their dynamic over there a little bit, meaning he's not, he's, um, not going to be doing um, a lot of ornamental plantings and landscape plantings. He's going to strictly, I think, start to just do uh, urban trees. Great. and large trees so I think he's going to expand his operation oh, nice. he has a pretty big landscaping aspect to his business yeah uh, landscape installation that is right um, and I think he's kind of waning off of that because there's such a huge uh, push in the state uh, for, for tree stock yeah, I think good um, that's so great. that might he's also willing to actually uh, raise trees for us Contract yeah wow that's good. So that's something that I need to just do a little more research with Joe Cook. I don't see it being an issue. Um, yeah, yeah, it and is. And the other thing too is that what's helped us here is that we can actually, we can do an RFQ up to fifty or forty-nine thousand dollars now. So it makes flexibility is a lot. It's a lot easier for us to actually write the RFQ and actually um, work with John to get the type of stock that we want because a lot of nurseries just won't do it. Good. You know, Good. but the, Rob did indicate though, that he did speak with. Um, I think it was. I think it was Weston. <coughs> I think it was Weston Nursery as well when he was at the Tree Warden and Foresters uh, Association annual meeting, and they said that they actually are trying to expand their urban tree. They're, they're trying to be more flexible for folks because of the large push for public shade trees as well. So they may also be interested in doing something. So there might, you know, I think the nursery industry is hopefully catching on that there is this huge push to reforest a lot of Massachusetts yeah. community. Right. So hopefully they're getting the message. But I know John definitely has the message. So good. That's really good news. Is okay. Weston doing any grow bags? Are they they're doing all There's the no one that does. No one yeah, does any grow bags. Mm -hmm. But that is primarily what Amherst does, right? Yeah. Good. He does primarily grow bags, and he does uh, he does ball and burlap. Depends where he gets the stock from, and when what time of year it is, and where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So we had a mix last year of uh, grow bag uh, and uh, and you know ball and burlap, but mm -hmm. we, you can't really beat his prices. So every time we would actually do a quote with him, his quote was actually the only one that fell in line with our um, the RFQ. So, because I didn't use the state contract last year because it's too much, it's, I, I just, because they changed the bidding uh, procurement rules, I just went with 
the quote. So the sooner we can put something together, the better off we'll be. But okay. He's very willing to work with us. So good. All right. Well, let's let's get down into the weeds here. So um, looking at my four bullet points to remind you, we're we're hoping to plant 250 trees. 150 of which will be main corridors and five downtown plantings. Um, 25 on Arbor Day, 25 for a neighborhood uh, planting pilot, and then 50 for ad hoc requests, approximately seven per board. Um, of the main corridors, we identified for this year Bridge Street, Pleasant Street, and Bridge Road, and so, a little bit of cons. Okay, we're all, we're all clear on that? Mm -hmm. We had further identified a potential site for planting in downtown, which was in front of the U.S. Postal Service. However, after our meeting with Wayne, we learned that, that site is off the table. Mm -hmm. And the reason it is is because there is a potential plan to put in a bike pad to basically do a complete redo of, there's a bus shelter there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they would, they're trying to get the, the state to actually pony up to put in a better bus shelter and to incorporate a bike pad there for their bike share program. Um, I, I'll get more to the bike pads because that, that actually interfaces with our CDH thing too. But um, so the bottom line is that it would be, um, it, it would be putting the cart before the horse to put trees in there if they, because they could potentially be pulled up in the next, mm -hmm couple of years so we have to find a new downtown site and I'm just so committed to us making that a priority of forcing ourselves every year to pull up five you know to, to identify five locations that are brand new sites that require some pulling up and structural so soil um, installation in downtown because that's where I feel like we have the most impact so um, so here here's what I can report um, the, the main corridors, you know, I, some of us did a first um, brush, Molly, Marilyn, and I, and, and it was very crude, both because some, in some cases, like on Pleasant Street, we were just looking at tree, my tree keeper, and in the case of Bridge Street, um, it was you know, fast and furious, and I, you know, I, I personally don't have the expertise that folks like you do. So, on a second pass, you guys did looked at both, and I'd be happy for you to speak personally about what it went. But, but I did look at um, at the spreadsheet where you dumped all your data, and I could see that a lot of the potential sites we had identified you actually nixed from, from mm -hmm. possibilities. So that's okay. That's good. We want to make we want to choose a good sites. Um, but what I'd really love to do is after you guys speak about that, um, for us to um, create another set of tasks whereby we're going back on the streets and looking for more sites and identifying what size trees we want. So, pass it to you guys. Well, <coughs> Rob, I and Jen went down the Bridge Street and we did Pleasant Street. And <coughs> it's probably the coldest day of the year. <laughs> it was. We, the f f the f mm -hmm. part of Bridge Street that we were looking at that the city has control over the tree belt is so thin there and there's cars parked all day long yeah. on one side and the sidewalk right on the other so you've got about a two foot planting bed which part of bridge street is this near the historical society oh. to the corner okay yeah <coughs> the other side of the street there's room for setback plantings but that's about it there maybe mm -hmm. half a dozen i think and so rob there. said that he had a connection at the what we were worried about is in <coughs> Like in front of the, on the tree belt in front of this, the historic uh, site, there's, there's a tree belt there, but um, like Jay said, there was all these parking places, and those are like really heavily used. And I just think, you know, people are going to be opening their doors and on them and walking yeah. over them. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and that's the side that the wires were on, so mm -hmm. they would have to be smaller trees, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So it just seemed like we could probably get people mad. You know, and and I think he Rod said he had talked in previously to this historical society, and there's a f a person involved there. I don't know if they're on paid, unpaid. I'm not quite sure, but has arboriculture in their history and is very interested in working with us. 
and wants to do some setback I wonder if that's Lori Sanders. Yeah. Yeah. I, Lori I Sanders. thought he's the nature person. Maybe, maybe, but I thought he used another person's name because I remembered her name. But anyway, um, he has a connection there that we could potentially, you know, plant some trees back in there. Just on the other side of the fence? Too? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that would okay. actually be yeah, in the long chance. run way better yeah. chance. Yeah. But I don't now I read in the paper they're putting they can actually cut some trees down because they're doing solar over there. Uh -huh. So I I'm not uh, quite sure, uh, you know. Yeah, some beautiful oaks. It's just a white pine. No, it was a white pine. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. But I didn't know I don't know where it was. But anyway with the oxen. Yeah, with oxen they called oh, the street. Oh yeah. that was the Tom yeah, yeah, Jenkins. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, so I, um, um, you know, I was just driving along Bridge Street and I, uh, the other day, and I realized that we re we have not fully explored the tree belts that go from. So that just takes us to the curve of Bridge Street, where where at Pomeroy Terrace hits, and then mm -hmm. there's a there's a curve. Then from there all the way to Grant Avenue, we still own the street, right? Northampton yes, still yeah. owns the street, and, and there Grant's on the left. Before Sheldon, right? Okay. And and there are still tree belt potential there that I feel like we need to go back and explore that neither of us have done. Mm -hmm. So um, that is, I'd love to put you guys on assignment for that area too. Like there are some very small, I think they're lindens that are looking really scraggly. They're underwire trees that are right against Bridge Street Cemetery. Yep. They're they're little lindens, aren't they? I think they are. They are, but they are, they're all, they've been trimmed and... Yeah, they're hideous yeah. looking. Um, um, but on the other side, I mean, there's just potential uh, <clears throat> along there somewhat. So I, I just want us to make sure that every time, every spot that we have um, <clears throat> identified, that is identifiable, we capture it. I mean, if we are going to try to do some kind of impact planting along Bridge Street, then it behooves us to, get, to capture every spot we can. So that's one, one area I'd love to put on your two radar. And <coughs> we'll need to move on this, you know, pretty soon because um, we do want to get a, if we have a month to get a, um, a tree list in. And then, Rich, help me remember what Wayne reported to us about Pleasant Street. That is, is it that we are now owning Pleasant Street? The state is turning over the part of Pleasant Street all the way up to the river. It's already been, the state already filed mm -hmm. their Bridge Street of Deeds back in the fall. Kind of unbeknownst to the city, they just oh. kind of did it. Now, okay. we, now we own to the river. Oh. Uh, Including the rotary? I think we own to the bowl now, they have to walk. Yeah, it, it does include the rotary. Yep. We looked at sites a lot of places. Yeah. It's, like <coughs> it's I think you could have an amazing tall tree that goes up and over. But David, I, I ran it by David Narkowitz. Mm -hmm. He didn't love the. He said that you know this all building. the studies about ran, ran roundabout show that when you have something in the middle, it creates visibility block and there's higher accident rate. Yeah. You got to do something else in that thing. What's in that? Nine foot. Not a tree. Yes, and you plant. Shrubbery. Right. Yeah. The yes. one single but trunk. A single trunk single trunk that goes tree. Yeah. It's I mean, like putting it in a perfect place home, for a tree. It's really just a short term. It, it's a short term issue until the tree becomes mature. Right. And then it's really, it, it's, if you think about it, it's like looking around a signpost. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how thick the tree is as long as you're moving. Mm -hmm. really, you're always going to see mm -hmm. what's coming around you. Right. A signpost can do the same thing. Yeah. So I. I can you work with him on that one a little bit? Sure, I can. Mm -hmm. Well, for what? I mean, we could plant a 15-year-old tree. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Something that's already got a little bit of a yeah. uh, champagne glass habit. Um, so, or umbrella. Excuse me, Jay, what did you start to say about Pleasant Street? Um, the other sites we saw on Pleasant Street all need to be dug out and redone soil-wise to be planted. Well, that, that could be our five sites. Yeah. You know, we can commit ourselves. To, uh, did you find five good ones? <coughs> like, uh, some. There's spaces, but you're going to have to take up probably two slabs of concrete. Remember, that was the stretch that the budget was, where the trees were cut from the project, as was the stormwater. Yeah, right? that's, that's the box the, that box. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's definitely room for improvement in that. Yeah. Did you I mean, see the plantings they put uh, there? Yeah, we saw. Yeah, the other the other thing on um, on Pleasant Street was um, 
right across the street from, uh, what's that, what's the one that comes in on the right? There? Just after the island, after uh, Hamden and Zimmerman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one. there's a, there's Not a, where, yeah, where, where they had the, it was a staging area. Yeah. yeah so that's a, bit, that's a big area. Can I think that that's that? already, well, that's, that was part of the Pleasant Street redesign, and I think <coughs> they already have plans for that. I'm 90%. As far as I know, they're putting a sign there. That's the extent of it. That's it? Oh. To Northampton. Oh. It looked like much was going in there. That's a big area. You could put a couple of grass. Grass. You could put some big trees. Are you oh, talking about those dividers, right? Little park the dividers out. between the lanes? No, no, oh, no, no. Where are you talking the, about? On the, so if you're coming from the rotary, it's on the right hand side, right before the, the plantings they did with the rain gardens. The, on the corner the of the road to the so yeah. tree yeah. plant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely check in on Wayne with Wayne on that. Oh. Um, I just don't know if. If, uh, there, there's a tremendous amount of utilities in there, though, I can tell you that. There's a lot of, there's mm. two giant gas pits in there. Uh -oh. Uh, uh oh. But that doesn't mean you couldn't plant something in there. <laughs> the other thing you could do, too, you know, would be interesting is you could plant a couple of trees right in those islands. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, I, I think we had proposed that. But I, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. You weren't thrilled with that, though, because you didn't think they'd live. It didn't look big enough to me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look at it again without. Um, you know, on we actually found those on my tree keeper. So Davey's <coughs> tree, uh, resource group identified those as potential planting sites. I don't know. Do you think, I mean, I don't know. What do you think about the survival rate of those, though? You know what I mean? <coughs> like somebody hitting them with a car or snow plow. Well, I think they'll help with traffic calming until they don't. I don't think it hit them. I would hit a snow plow. I think actually I'd be more worried about the about the trees dying from chemicals yeah, yeah. And, and just being, you know, so if they're salt, salt, salt tolerant and drought tolerant, they actually might stand a chance. Um, Chuck a honey locust in there. It'll be honey locust street. Yeah, we will yeah, we'll take the Pleasant Street name off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, and there was, one, there was one triangle that was where, um, what's the road that comes in? Uh, behind the just medical a, marijuana place. Oh, uh, service center way? Uh, the center. one next to that. Uh, right uh, right up. Yeah, yeah there's a triangle there that yeah. I think that um, it would really uh, impede visibility. They would you mm -hmm. know, put a tree in there. Okay. All right. Well, here's what I'd love you to do, Jen. Um, I would love you to go back to that document where we're all housing yeah. this information so, and just right. excise yeah. anything that is out. Any sites that are out, just take them off the list. Just delete them. Delete them. Okay. Because okay. Um, because we want to start shrinking this to the list we yeah. actually want to plan, okay. and I, and we want to keep a count. Yep. And um, and so do that. Go and then if and then you guys said you did a drive by along Bridge Road. Yeah, we just we didn't we ran out of Bridge time. Road. Okay. And then I had um, I. I have to check in with Rob. I, he has a little more time than I do. I asked him if he'd be willing to walk that street and take the the um, hard copy of the Google. That's what, what I did. I just uh -huh. printed it out. Yeah, it was just easier yeah. to walk around it. And uh, if he would, you know, check well, those sites. But I have to check in with him again. Okay, great. So the three of you working together yeah. sounds like a plan. Yeah. Uh, and if, if it turns out that we don't have 150 sites identified, then we need to <coughs> we need to offer another street, another priority street. Do, do you want to have just a couple backups or, uh, as it stands? You pulling up that chart? Yeah, I was going to pull, pull it up too. Okay. Yeah, it seems like I'm getting it. Okay, good. Um, All right, well, I see it. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So we can work on priority zones. What's the name of that document? Uh, criteria for. Oh, okay. Sorry. 
All right, well, you know what? I see, I see we've got some options here. I can name a few others. Let me just tell you right now what we've got. We've got, so Route 10, we still have 13 more trees that need to go to either be swapped or moved in. Um, route, that sells you. Yeah, Route 9, I feel like there's still plenty of spots along <coughs> Home Street that, and, sir, and North, North Main in Florence, you know, Elm Street yes. is part of Route 9, and then, and then that section um, across the street from um, Child's Park, uh, where there's no, where there's a real estate agent there, yeah. on the same side of Schooly Dick, there's no wires there. Okay. And there's a. It's pretty wide. Yeah. You know, that, that tree. Yeah. Pretty wide. Yeah. It strikes me as a perfect place okay. for trees. Okay. So I mean, I just feel like Route Nine could be just uh, could be scoured over. Uh, the entire length of it that that we have control over. And where does where does the control end? Uh, 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 right around uh, Florence Street. Florence? Yeah. Florence Street? Yeah. Florence Street leads up by the VA. Oh, past so the VA. Long, long. Past the VA. Yeah. yeah. So we have that very large tree belt that's actually on the, you know, plus the VA. It's huge. Uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. uh, and then you can, there's also. <coughs> the other thing too is that I have to see but we may own some property along the uh, if you're going past the park coming to Florence on the right hand side there's no sidewalk but that doesn't mean that we don't own some uh -huh. of the land there mm -hmm. so we could actually plant trees yeah. there as well is that a walking area no there's no sidewalk on that side sidewalks on the other side but unfortunately the tree belt on the other side is very narrow and okay. that's where all the utility wires are uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh, so let's prioritize, let's maybe start, uh, just like we did with the, the inventory, start with the center and go out and prioritize those areas that are most walkable, that have bus stops, you know, school school walking routes. So we're going to basically homes. do it like from Smith College up to... Wood. Okay. Yeah. Um, and cons, I don't know if you all have actually gotten a uh, chance to look at cons, mm -hmm. but what I'd love for you to do is look at the Gazette site. And you know, not just the um, the tree belt, which is a swale, right? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be rain garden. However, we know that trees can coexist very happily in those spaces. But we also have their lawn, which they have have a standing offer to us to to present a proposal. Where right. those kind of old crowds? Yeah, are. where the where the old apple trees are, and they would just we would just start from scratch. They would cut down the, like three out of four of those trees yeah, are yeah. dead. They lose that. I think that that would be, um, uh, there's a great opportunity yeah. there. Yeah. And we should take it, especially because uh, that offer will get forgotten mm -hmm. if we don't mm -hmm. act on it pretty soon. All right, so that's the main corridors. Can I move on to the next one? Okay, then I can give you a report about the um, about Arbor Day planting. So Arbor Day planting is we identified Cooley Dickinson Hospital, potentially Jackson Street School, um, and some of the, the other elementary schools if we needed to. Um, I put an email to um, the principal of Jackson Street School and I never heard anything back, so I have to follow up on that. Uh, I, I, asked, I asked her if uh, Rick and I could come, Rich and I could come and sit down with her and talk to her about planting on the islands and try to sway her on that one. Is she the one who would make that decision? Or is it the school I think she would have a strong influence on okay. the decision. I mean, I think that there's a grounds manager, and we would invite that person to the meeting too. But I think we'd start by trying to um, appeal to her, at, at, in as much as trees impact children's health and enjoyment and serenity and whatever. There was a crew from Jackson Street that was planting. Did they plant at the school or just near the school? You mean two Arbor uh, Days two, ago? Yeah, two Arbor Days ago. No, this fall. This fall. I think they planted. Uh, Alicia Oh no, they planted. In, they planted on school property yeah. in front of the playground. Oh, good. So they we made inroads there. We actually planted five trees. And there's a nice group oh, of the parents. Yeah. Who volunteered? Alicia organized them. Oh, do her kids go to Jackson Street or something? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. No, oh, nice. We filled in that. Jackson Street's actually got a lot of trees in the last ten years. Well, it could use them. Yeah. It could use more. It's a lot of space. Um, okay, so that's Jackson Street, and then Rich and I actually met with the grounds manager, what's his name, John, oh, I should know this, John Lombardo. John Lombardo. <laughs> Just one O more than my husband. <laughs> um, 
shortly after the new year, and we did a walk along, along, I guess, what is that, Locust Street there? I don't even know what street uh, it's called. Locust, <coughs> uh, it's actually Locust on Elm Street. Yeah. <laughs> and we identified, we had a, a conversation about a lot of different possibilities, and where we ended up landing is that we would do a planting from, you know how there's a traffic light right there where you enter Coley Dickinson Hospital? And then between there and Smith Vogue, there is um, there is a big setback opportunity. Right. And that's the area, so that we decided we focus mostly on that. On the entrance, I think a couple of trees on the other side of that entrance, but mostly on that on that side, on the Smith Vogue side. And that we and that's it at that's when we learned that um, the city is planting, planning another bike oh. pad right there near oh. the bus stop. Darn, they grab an orange bus. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I got pissed and I went to Wayne and I said, hey Wayne, this is what we were talking about, man. You know, you have to bring us to the table early on. We need to be coordinating. And I basically said, every time you create a bike or ped infrastructure, you have to be thinking trees every t single time. Um, and so he, there, especially because the, that bike pad is probably going to involve solar panels because they're all electric bikes. Oh. And they are, actually oh. that particular site, they may end up hooking into the utility yes. pole. Yep. So we might not have interference with, mm -hmm. with um, solar panels there, mm -hmm. but every other bike pad, they're putting like eight in around the city. Like and a they're all roof, a little solar roof over, over I there. I think so. A little solar, solar something. I think so. He the the plans. Oh wait. <laughs> no, he's not there. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> he definitely heard my impatience, and that was fine, um, because we've been down this road before. <laughs> so what we ended up doing is we ended up identifying 15 sites where we could plant 15 fairly largest trees. And then there was a big question mark around any trees that could go around the bike pad. We left a lot of room to not interfere with the bike pad in the event that the bike pad has solar panels. How big are the bike pads? It's like 40 feet. It's pretty big. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, 40 feet long? I think it's like, yeah. Sort of like length of room. Yeah. Yeah, because the stations are kind of sizable because the bikes have to. Charge. Charge kind of yeah. like And this is for people are, to share. Bikes are kind of bulky. It's oh. a bike share program with o of electric bikes. Yep. Hmm. Oh, so people would pick them up and deliver them up there. Well, there'd be eight different locations around the city where they could drop off the bike. Hmm. Yeah. I, I haven't followed the ins and outs of this. Um, I actually was was reassured to see that there are electric bikes. I think that that might actually, I mean, I was very suspicious of this program working with just standard bikes, with the millions of bikes there are and how cheap bikes are to get. And also how little you can actually bike around the city for numbers of months throughout the year. Anyway, that's another issue. Um, this just to say that uh, as far as I know, the ball, the ball is in Rich's court in that you need to get to that, you need to draw this up as a little bit of a plan. Yeah, I need to figure out exactly, because there's a strange, there's, in front of Cooley Dixon Hospital, there's a huge tree belt there that has a single uh, wire that actually runs the lights that are out in front. So it, unfortunately, prime time planting place in front of Cooley Dick is in that tree belt for large trees. Mm -hmm. And from our conversation with John, he, they wanted to actually get rid of all the shrubbery that's in the front, including there's these overgrown junipers that really just act like it's a wall. So people can't actually see the hospital if you're sitting in a car. You can see the top where, of the hospital. Where are the junipers? I can't picture that. They're, they're, they're right they're behind, behind the Presidius. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So. Oh, you see Presidius from this. Oh. For a longer term thought in my head, I, I was trying to figure out how we can convince National Grid to partner with us to actually bury the utility, mm -hmm. to bury that single wire in a conduit. Keep the lights on the pole, but then we can plant the trees in the tree belt on that end of it. Mm -hmm. That said, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what, because we own, according to the, our plans, the city owns farther into Cooley Dickinson's property. Oh. So, but I'm, there is some caveat about uh, they were allowed to build their parking lot. We gave them some kind of uh, easement 
to allow them to do that so they can expand their parking lot. So we're still trying to figure out how that would work. Mm. Well, that that conversation doesn't really impact the the, the, other end. the narrow air, area yeah. we were looking at. And for that, I believe I, I needed to get an answer from Wayne about the bike pad. What right. he said is it's in design. I won't have an answer. So I think we should just proceed taking any small trees around the bike pad out of the equation and just moving forward with planting 15 large trees where we identified they could go in that area. So um, there's enough room to put 15 between wow. like the bus stop and yeah and because it's so deep. Um, um, wow, you're gonna like yeah as well as the bike pad. Yeah, wow. Is yeah. that including picture. the Smith School property? No, it's not including the Smith School property. It's up to where the driveway comes out of Pulley Dick. It includes both yeah. sides of the entrance. So there were some trees on the other side. There's a place you go in. Cooley has this entrance that's near Smith Locational that goes well, back to the. Remember, the, the building is quite long. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not just a, a, a clump of area. I mean, well, you can take a look at it from, from Google Maps. It's, it's, it's quite long. I mean, that's, that's the count that we got. And, um, I'm going to pull up the, the email that I, where I summarize everything. in my notes 14 to 15 large trees in bullet one area and that was um, oh, yeah the local street portion of the Dixon lawn between the traffic light and Smith Oak you know that was that was a kind of back of the envelope count when we were walking it um, with the ground supervisor. With the ground awesome. supervisor. Yep. And then ritual. And so what I've got here is ritual work up a proposal of precise locations. John will consider whether CDH wants to purchase the trees or rather accept the gifts of trees by the city with the understanding that gifted trees will then become public shade trees protected under Mass General Law 87. And um, they they liked this I, the idea that this was going to be a city hospital collaboration and that we would do some press good cool. press coverage around it. Mm -hmm. Here's what I here's what I suggest. Um, why? F well, first of all, Rich, do you do you think you can work up the proposal? And if so, do you need or want Jen and Jay support in just? Making sure that we have the count right and we have locations yeah, I'd be more right. I'm more than happy to have some assistance with that if you guys are have the time. That way, then we can actually go out there and do some measuring and kind of figure out exactly where we can fit. Now. Do you remember where the bike pad was supposed to be located? That's yeah, on the right hand side of the bus shelter. Yeah, exactly. I can we probably gave ourselves a, 40. I think there is a blimp, uh, like a uh, proposed, uh, just not a design, not a complete design plan, but there's a uh, preliminary like photograph of where the location was that mm -hmm. I can probably get from our engineering department. Mm -hmm. This Maggie Chan, uh, who's traffic engineer, was involved in all this conversation. We went and looked at all these locations, um, so I can probably get that. Okay. All right. that Am I overloading you guys too much? Oh, uh, we can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah, we can divide that. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. I, um, there will be certain times when I'm going to really need to lean on people in this commission who have like the right skill set for this kind of work. So, thank you. Are you talking about that section? Will you need or like a yes. little drawing? This yeah. whole thing to hear. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or. Uh, yeah. No, I think. Okay. I think what we we'll probably need to do that. is we probably need to go out yeah. and just look at the yeah. site. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And actually That's take the measuring tape. Yep. Okay. And then so 40 feet isn't actually. It's probably like that. Yeah. Uh, so four feet is actually yeah. 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 the measure. Yes, this is a perfect measure. If anybody wants to see the site, the site is here. 
and and each one of those um, parking spots is 10 feet wide, so you have this perfect measuring stick. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay. So it's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger than it's hidden near a tree. To the left of that sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're talking about. So the plus. So the. It's like 10, 20, 30. We're talking about all this area. Right. And this. And this is very long. Yeah, I mean that's what the bike was. Yeah, like this. It'd be really nice. Put them closer to the <coughs> Right, you could, right? So, is that a flu and this, no. and this is going to be um, where they're removing the first of the up. I think that might be off the picture. It's off. It's off the site. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. So this is available as well. This is available and a little bit over here. Does this There's move? Does this rotate? Yeah, just use the hand. Ooh, that's just slide it. Oh, crap! Slide it. <laughs> 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 that would be neat. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, that's Juniper. Yeah. I say that's Juniper. Juniper. Yeah. 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 That's a pretty steep slope there. You can't appreciate that. That's right. that's it is. Oh, slope. I see. But you could still plant trees. But on steep there, slope. yeah. And there, I think there's a potential for at least one tree over there. I can't remember what that is. But they, would they, this is way set back. Would they consider doing any in here? There are trees. In there. Oh. And yeah, I want to I want to keep us thinking about like biggest bang for our buck. For I mean, let, let Cooley Dick invest yeah. in their own right, right, right. Yeah. All right, so let's let's keep moving along. So that's Arbor Day. So I guess I'm going to circle back. So to Arbor Day is going to be Cooley Dickinson. Cooley Dickinson and possibly J Jackson yeah. Street School. So I, I need to um, circle back to Gwen Agna. <clears throat> and then, okay, that's Arbor Day. Neighborhood planting pilot. So what we what we decided the last time we met was that this would become a fall event. No, I take that back. That the applications would be due in the fall, so we can put the order in in the, by January and then have them ready for spring, spring. or early summer. But that this year, what we would do is, first of all, we would create the program, and second of all, we would pilot it in an uh, in a um, sort of hand-picked setting. And we decided that we were going to do the Orchard to Orchard Elizabeth Street neighborhood. So I'm wondering Over by the fairgrounds. Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering if Trino Hampton would like to start reaching out to those. Do you have contacts there? Yeah, we've been talking to people on Orchard and which streets did you have? Orchard, Orchard and Elizabeth. Lincoln. Elizabeth. Yeah, Lincoln's Yeah, I know Rob's been going over there for the past few years and making contacts with people. Mm -hmm. um, he'd have to speak to where that stands in terms of okay. people involved. Those, I think it's a great idea. The cemetery, along, Orchard has a cemetery yeah. on one side. It has it on part of it. And actually, Rich, that actually could be, your your job would be to look at what trees could potentially be set back right inside the cemetery there. Could anything? And then, as I mentioned before, I would so like to divest of $700 that I've been sitting on for the last 15 years. <laughs> That I um, that I fundraised from the, the citizens of uh, Orchard Street to plant trees along Orchard Street. Oh. <laughs> you have seven hundred dollars. I have seven hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. From people on Orchard. It was mostly from the Salusianics. Salusianics gave us a thousand bucks. Oh. And we did use some of it to plant along Orchard Street. The trees that you see there now are trees that mm. we planted when I was uh, when I lived there. Mm -hmm. But it was only a fraction of. The money they gave us. And, and I, I know Salusia would probably love to have mm. matching, you know, they have these beautiful sugar, sugar maples. maples. So it's something that, you know, matched on the other side would be awesome. Yeah, that would be nice. It might be it might behoove you also to for us to circle back with Alicia on 
what you want to do with Jackson Street School since there's already momentum. Yeah. Mm. Um, so contact. I don't know if, if Gwen was involved. To what degree she was involved? She must have been to some mm -hmm. degree. But the fact that there's already relationships Good there, mm -hmm. those people would like, I'm sure, to be involved again or Great. certainly be kept informed if there's another initiative since they've already invested in that. Perfect, perfect. Should I just reach out to Alicia myself? I can CC you if you want and say, hey. Yeah, copy me, please. Okay. And um, we'll look at Arbor Day, what we can help in getting the word out to volunteers and getting people engaged. I definitely want to include the people who already work on that area. Yeah, I mean, we would love These you guys for, yeah, we would love you for Cooley Dick also if we can get this uh, done by then. Uh, yeah, of course we're interested in okay. yeah, helping. All right. Um, so where does that leave you? You're going to have for Arbor Day, which is in April, you're going to have Cooley Dickinson. Yeah, and when I say Arbor Day, we I kind of see it as anywhere between Earth Day and Arbor Day is mm -hmm. the week that we think about planting trees. It gives us a little more flexibility. Okay, that's all over the place. So just to recap, for Arbor Day, you want 15 trees at Coakley Dickinson. That, we, roughly, that we're going to go double check to make sure. Okay. And actually, you know, there's, there's a wide tree belt. Just look a little bit beyond that narrow Jackson zone, Street. like any potential plantings on Elm Street near yeah, Cooley Dick. Which would be farther down towards the high school. Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. that larger tree belt Got that could right. be incorporated. Right. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, yeah. across from Charles Park. I mean, it so. all has good public benefit. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's try to get to a goal of 25 trees in that zone. Good. Okay, so you have, you have Cooley Dickinson, Jackson Street. And that would be it for Arbor Day. That would just two sites then. We can 25 trees between those two sites. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I did, find, I did send a letter to um, Ned's family about us planting a bur oak in Lampton Park mm -hmm. sometime in the spring. So that's another one we have to add to our list. Yeah. Okay. I want to just um, think another that section of town. Uh, David Murphy, I've seen him twice and he's thanked us so much for those chestnut trees we planted at oh, Giants nice. Park. Nice. He said anything in the future, he's glad to mm -hmm. have them there because people will take care of them there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. so he also owns property along that Elm Street yep. side too. Two places. There. Oh yes, gorgeous cherry tree. Oh, yeah. Murphy's. He's got the real estate thing. Yeah. Right? And the house yeah. next to it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, great. Well, actually, I'll be bringing them up in a later topic um, that we have. All right. So I'm going to keep moving us along. And then the last thing is ad hoc requests. And I'm not quite sure, Rich, what our plan is for putting an order in for 50 ad hoc trees. Um, it's a good question. I guess we. If we're going to do ad hoc trees, we're probably going to have to do things that are uh, probably a mixed bag of trees that are large trees and probably smaller uh -huh. trees that have been sellers, I guess uh -huh. you would say. So we can have at least an inventory of some trees that we can offer. The other thing too is that if we have the ability to do it, we can actually always go and get a few more trees, which we did, we've done obviously multiple times already. We've gone outside the contract. I can go up to $10,000. So I don't see an issue with it, yeah. but we'll just have to kind of, once we have a, <clears throat> a general idea of what we want with the larger order, then we can also ask for other, some other trees. Okay. So All right. something I can work with Rob on. And mm -hmm. so I think it's a promotional thing in that once we, we get the word out that there are all these different ways where we'll be planting trees, I think this is, this is you know, I think we need a, a press release describing this whole planting plan. And then when people know that they can request and we make the decisions on what requests to honor that fall in advance, then we can order them that following January. So again, this is that gap year where we're still kind of chasing, we're still being reactive rather than proactive. Do you still think you're going to be able to get 50 trees, given the setback 
uh, requests for trees to be? It, 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 I mean, requests? once people, yeah, once people know that, you know, it's not going to be there, or there has to be a deed or yeah. whatever. We're going to negotiate and see what happens. I mean, yeah. the ad hoc trees can also be uh, folks that just want a tree in the tree belt. Yeah, correct. You know, exactly. Yeah, can, yeah. For example, there's a family in uh, Main Street in Leeds, and we have to cut down one of the larger trees, one of the only trees left on Main Street Leeds that actually is large. Mm -hmm. And the family was very upset because it has to come down, but I offered them to plant a new tree mm -hmm. and I said I'd like to have you be part of the planting. So that's, you know, oh, look, cool. that's, yeah, yeah. that's on city property, but that's just an example of an ad hoc tree that's not a setback tree. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, any place we can eke out, I mean, we can even, we can even probably uh, doesn't matter. We can even probably actually move the trees closer. So the, the rule, so the way that I've been kind of thinking about this also is that the trees that are with on or within are on the public right away. Ah, okay. So if we plant trees that are just outside, just outside the public right away, or just sorry, just outside the private property, they're still considered public shade trees. Uh -huh. So you know, we don't, if, if we do a complete setback where the whole tree is on private property, well, that's a setback. If we do a, a tree that's on the property line, according to the law, that's considered a public shade tree. Okay. So there's, you can, okay. I think we can make it work. Okay. All right. Either way. I just didn't want to, you know, end up with too many, like a being too optimistic, you know, that, because, yep. you know, we had this great thing going with trees on Hampton and then. All of a sudden, those little breaks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Rob and I were talking about that the other day when I met with him. I think we did 80 setback plantings mm -hmm. last year, so you know, I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. that's a fair amount. So if we are if we're able to capture 50 mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the new, uh, you know, the new regs, we have to that'd be great. But I'm not so sure we'll be able to do it. But I still think we should try. Sure. Um, I want to throw something out there because I just thought about this with uh, the Orchard Street slash uh, Elizabeth Street plantings. Is if most of them need to be setbacks. In order to avoid that conversation about trying to negotiate mm -hmm. ownership, I could donate this money to Tree Northampton. Good. Good. And they could buy the trees. Yep. Trees. I don't. I don't yeah. Worry, but it's fine. Yeah. Exactly. That would be good. Yeah. I think. All right. So that might that might be a solution. Just mm -hmm. keep me abreast about what I, I, this these this money has to go for trees in the neighborhood. I feel feel very feel you know very committed to that, but. Uh, if it gives us all more options, then let's go that way. All right, uh, moving us along because we're actually a little bit behind. Um, uh, this is a proposal that <clears throat> my daughter would like to bring to the commission, but because she's flat out right now, I'm going to just do it on her behalf. So, as you know, Smith College is an arboretum, and they um, they tag every tree, and every tree has. Um, has a QR code that leads to a, 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 a site that, that Smith College hosts um, called TreeSpeak. And so when you go up to a tag and you put your little QR code reader, you, you're taken to a, um, an audio, an audio recording about that tree. And um, it's you know educational, informational. It could be about the history of that particular tree, or something about the species, or the the mm. the public benefits of that kind of tree, or whatever. It can be all sorts of good things. So my daughter had the proposal to bring that sort of tagging to select trees in the city of Northampton, mm. and um, and she is going to be an intern again this summer for the Botanic Gardens and she has been invited to develop this program and to pilot it in um, Child's Park. Child's Park is very interested in having her do it. And then also um, with the city's you know, consent and, and collaboration in select parts downtown, like it could be Pulaski Park or it could be a few specimen trees around town. I think I, I, you know, I don't know if you've ever tried um, tree speak um, with on the Smith campus, but I think it's pretty cool, and I think it raises um, awareness and appreciation for trees. So Smith College would do a lot of the. Um, I mean, things need to be ironed out. First of all, there's a question of can we even tag public trees? Hmm. Putting up little, what would it involve? Putting a little tag. I mean, a I little think nail with it. It could be, like it could be like a botanical label, but then it also, uh, 
depending on the size of the tree, I mean, if there's not a low hanging branch, it can't be just like a, um, a zip tie on a branch. It would have to be an actual tag on a tree. Yeah, you can do it. We can do it. Yep. Okay, that's, that takes care of that. As long as, you, as, long as I'm aware of it. And then, um, you know, to the best of my knowledge, Smith College would be willing to, to provide the supplies to, and, uh, and to host the site. And it would be peddled as a collaboration between the city and the college. And they like the whole town gown marriage concept of that. And Maxi would, would be the main person carrying this project. And, um, and so she would be an intern that somebody else would pay for. Sounds cool and managing. Yeah. Would we write our, we or she would write our own narratives? What that would be, be her project. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. And, but she would be collecting, yeah, yeah, she would absolutely collect. You know, I'm thinking that like um, there are some trees that have stories. Yeah. And that would be cool to tell. And um, whatever, I'm sure she would love people's input on, on some of that. Hmm. Yeah. It's funny, I was thinking about that today, talking about a story. We're on Massasoit Street and cut down a huge dead sugar maple. And there's a picture of Calvin Coolidge uh, planting a tree on Arbor Day with his wife. Oh. It doesn't tell where it doesn't tell you where it is, and I can't really tell where the home is. But I was thinking to myself, you know, what if that was the tree? Wow. Yeah. Was the tree? Yeah. So there is a lot of history mm -hmm. um, that you know, and, and I just try, I was trying to I was trying to find the picture today. Of course, it was too late. We had to cut the tree out anyways. But mm -hmm. it was just interesting that you know the tree is probably a hundred. Probably, probably a 95 to 100 year old, probably yeah. easily, and it's huge. There's, there's not very many of them left on, on, on that side. Did someone tell me there was a history project at one time that you led in the town, a culture, a cultural project where images of trees were pulled out of Forbes collection? I mean, I certainly did that in uh, as I, I put that. together the presentation that I created to try to make build momentum for this commission. And that was a fun project, and the, and the librarians were great resources, and they, they, they had a blast with it. So Magsy would probably use Forbes as a resource and Historical Hampton as a resource. What happened to that collection that you assembled? I still have it. You do? Yeah. yeah. Could, could, I, could I see it sometime? Sure. Yeah. But, uh, is it yeah. I mean, I only got, gathered ones that I thought were useful for the purposes of showing tree lined streets. And were those some of the ones that we use in our presentations, yeah. the tree wardens? Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, but there are more. Okay. There are lots more. Because yeah. Tree Northampton has been curious about, you know, long term, a goal would be to have more on the website about the history of trees yeah. to tie together. Right. Especially when we were working on Forbes, there's this picture, I don't know where I saw it, of the trees when they were young, the yeah. trees that are coming now, now. Yeah. And just to have that yeah. cycle. They, it's so, um, it's so funny, it was almost made. exactly the same. You look at the trees yeah, now, it looks like 1903. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to slow us down here, but yeah. yeah. Um, one more thing. Uh, God, what was I going to say about that? Um, Tree speak. Yeah, there was, oh. Do you need a narrator for the audio? Oh, Todd's voice is very nice. nice. <laughs> My daughter's got a nice voice, too, so she might want to be that. But right. you've got a really good a real bass voice. voice. Really wow. good. Radio um, voice. Yeah, yeah, totally. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I was going to say is, you know, for people, again, back to this legacy carbon offset memorial program, if Madeline could also say, you know, and this, this tree was planted in honor of blank. I mean, how much greater is that for someone who, whose memory is, is, is memorialized in this tree that every time somebody goes to learn about that tree, they hear that this is in memory of blank. It just might be one more compelling reason for people to invest in the program. So. So that, uh, any more thoughts about this whole concept? When would she be starting it? She will probably start in late April. She has a week of, in, of intensive internship. Her school, that's part of her school's model. And then she'll be doing it all summer. So if we wanted to have input on particular trees to suggest that she include. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can connect you Contact all with her. her. Yeah. yeah, I can um, send an email saying, here's 
Here's Magsy, uh, Tree Commission, Magsy, Magsy Tree Commission. Any thoughts about trees? Just uh, as a, a starting point, what do you think about starting with something like Pulaski Park, tagging the trees there, since so many people use the park and it's a, it's a kind of a central hub? Sure. So I thought you were going to start with Child's Park. Well, Child's Park, yes, that I see that. It's, I don't think of Child's Park as public shade trees. They're really not. I know it's private property. Yeah. Exactly. So that's a separate. So it's separate. Yeah. Well, be kind of a nice continuation of the redo of Pulaski. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah, sure. That's what I thought. Updated, modern. Yeah. You know? Interactive. Mm -hmm. It would get good press. Mm -hmm. and so you know, some interesting, some, some newer stuff would be cool. There's some sassafras down there. Yeah. So some yeah. more unusual stuff. The bike yeah. tour that you did one time. Yeah. All the trees that were on that would be, might be good candidates for. Right, like the six of them that are left. <laughs> number but they would but certainly I was thinking about the um, Elm Street on Con the corner of Collins and Old South yeah that's oh, and yeah, that's the Champion true. Oak on Columbus Avenue uh, you may have a challenge with the, the fellow that lives there is quite uh, surly okay uh, he's a neighbor I can work with him okay Maxie goes contra dancing with him so okay the, okay oh. we got an in yeah we got an in yeah. yeah I know plus he's a public shade tree it is. It is. Yeah. He doesn't think that. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm All right. So <clears throat> that pretty much wraps up that piece. We're back on schedule, and now it's time for a report from Tree Northampton. Okay. Um, Rob's the one doing most of the work lately because <laughs> he has the time. And um, is he retired? Yeah. Well, mostly, not completely. Um, so uh, we talked about before the, the setbacks and you know we, ideally that city plan would work if but you know so we're a little in disarray we don't really know all that energy that was going to setbacks what'll happen exactly I, with I that talk, talk of course to, we want it to when I talked to Rob I didn't interrupt you the other day we, we talked about changing the language no, no, no. on G Northampton's website oh yes to basically mirror that Tree Northampton would provide setback trees not and not through the city. I suggested to him, I said, I think we really need to try this uh, and continue it the way we have done it, other than we now have a, another step that we have to go through. I don't think we should abandon. I'm not, I'm not ready to abandon the setback planning program completely. No. We if, if we find there's a tremendous amount of resistance, then we should revisit it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, Absolutely. I think we should kind of it's continue it, but make sure the language have. is correct so folks know that. I think, I don't think there's a lot of detail on the setback program. I think it, it, it just says call you. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty much what it says at this point. We'd like to help you. Yeah. You have to call Rich yeah. the Tree Warden. That's, you know, we just, we had it where they could get in touch with us for some period of time, but right. um, that, that left the website quite some time ago. So okay. it's really just right. all directed towards you. Okay. But um, if you want anything else on there, we could, um, right, we, can. we can add, okay. certainly. Um, so making the setback plan continue is, you know, a big hope of ours because it's so important to mm -hmm. have those better trees getting planted. Um, in that, Spirit, um, we did do some fundraising towards the end of the year. We put a button up on our website and um, started to get a little bit of interest. So we met recently and authorized $1,000 towards approximately 50 young trees, five to six feet tall, that we're going to grow out and have available to plant. Um, this so that's some material. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that will fill that space up, but those, because they're going to be bigger, mm -hmm. unlike the first ones we did were whips, mm -hmm. they're slow growing whips too, mm -hmm. but um, this will provide some material so that we don't miss a step when we move forward regardless, you know, if, um, but we, ideally the city plan will, will continue as it has been and people will be amenable to it. Especially with the variation that you just mentioned. Your turnover will be quick, way quicker on those bigger trees. 
you know, two years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that'll get us, position yeah. us so that yeah. we can keep the momentum yeah. going on that, and keep the trees going in. So, um, well, let's see, I know Rob did meet with you about planning, and the Village Hill crew, together with some other volunteers, Alicia and um, Bob Goss, I guess some, some dates have been set to begin the winter tree training, February wow. 6th and 12th. Yep. I understand you're involved with that. Is this trimming? Is this like a, a pruning? Yes, we're going to go try to finish up Village Hill. Oh, I thought you were going to finish Ward 2, then begin King Street, and also work again on Village Hill. Yes, that was discussed, but I haven't, there's no date set for that. So the only dates that I know at the moment are the two dates for Village Hill. Okay, so 6 and 12 is Village Hill. Yep. I guess Bob Goss is enthusiastic on board, too. That's awesome. So, so he's volunteering regularly with you guys? Yes. Yes. Oh, how awesome. And Day, of course. Yeah. I don't know. You, have you been involved in this planning, too, with the February? I haven't been, but I okay, let's get you see your available. I know Rob was hoping. I didn't know. I couldn't tell if he talked to you or not. <laughs> so sorry. This would be great. So we should email you. And then I did, or text. I, I did provide Rob with uh, some lists from Tree Keeper. <laughs> All of the remaining elm trees in Ward 2 that you and Rob were now oh, yeah. joining. And then I provided Rob with a, uh, a list of uh, Ward 2A of all the trees that uh, were set for young tree trains. So Rob has to go around and check to make sure that we cover them all because we move from different streets. But I wanted him to do it that way so actually what I can do is I can do a mass, I can do a mass work order. So you can come back to me and just say, this, we did these, you know, I think there was, uh, I don't know, like 49 or 50 trees. He just come back and we'll come a giant work record for all that. So those would actually fall into the pruning category. So these are the things that I have to capture. So last year we didn't we didn't have it up and running quite right. So Okay, we had a list. Yeah, And list. then we went through and we used standardized text for what we did right. and what and was I, needed. I don't have that list. So okay. Can, so Rob... Rob needs to have that list to do some imperative, or else okay. he's going to end up walking around everywhere. So if you could get that to him, unless he has it. <coughs> oh, I think he has it. It was it was neat. It was in a binder, and we were very careful yeah, of it. I don't have that. We um, so he may have that. Okay, so that would be great. Pruning list. Yeah. All right, and so that's exciting. Um, um, we haven't put together our whole schedule yet. We will be happy to help with Arbor Day again, of course, and um, want to have, again, this summer when it, we hit a lull to have some educational things. In the meantime, I met with Jay, who's working on looking at an educational event regarding the ash borer. Hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. we talked about that. and. Um, and he's, it's just a matter of getting the dates. I don't know, have you yeah, I, made any progress on dates? I talked to a friend of mine, Bear Levangi at Bioforest. They do treatment for, they come up with a, it's a, it's not a pest, it's a pesticide, but it, it doesn't kill the insect. It interferes with their life cycle. Mm -hmm. um, so it's much more amenable in the, in the environment mm -hmm. as far as affecting other plants or insects. Mm -hmm. um, and she talked to her boss who's very enthusiastic about that and he's done workshops all over the country for this kind of thing. And he's willing to get involved with it and uh, get Tawny, the uh, entomologist at UMass involved. Great. And some people that have been doing a program similar to this in another city where they've been trapping and uh, treating to see where the insects are going. So they could they could all get together and do a forum. And they're willing to do that. Okay. We need to come up with dates and times. Are we are we thinking about bundling this around Arbor Day? No, I think no. probably before that. Yeah, coming right up. 
Are there any dates we need to look out for, or are there any restrictions on the dates from anyone else's point of view? If it's a, a commission event or if it's going to be a Tree Northampton event, I don't know. We, yeah. we need a site. What you want to do? Site available. Or collaboration, collaborative right. event. Yeah, let's do a collaboration. Oh, yeah. uh, we can check on our end, uh, but. Um, find dates are there any dates yeah jay's restricted i mean this feels like a day of the week not a weekend kind of event right yeah is that what you're thinking like an I evening think because those folks are all <coughs> workers they're going to be working part of their job yeah yeah but i meant an evening yeah i just think we're the weekends are trickier yeah they're more they're you're competing you want me to so feel them out for dates first sure okay I think it's really important. Um, my understanding is, and I don't know who, who knows the ash trees, we don't have any significant ash, public ash trees. Well, that's that what the Rob was going to look into, and he didn't find any. Well, no, he, we, do. we have some significant yeah. ones. Yeah, so that's the road is a little bit. I thought from talking to Rob that they're, they're not very big, or they're, oh. that we have on two ends. We have ones that aren't very big. And then we have ones that are beyond their zenith. Yeah, not They're in bad shape. Yeah. In bad shape. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually kind you of reassuring. I mean, it can be, the ash trees just weren't favored as a street tree in this town, it seems no. like. And that's a blessing no, in a way. Had, the last 25 years, a lot of them have disappeared because of other reasons. reasons. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm just saying, this is a continent wide, and all the <coughs> ash trees oh, yeah. on the oh. continent are going yeah we're which leads me to think that this is a really good opportunity to communicate with the public in terms of the changing the changes facing trees and the challenges facing trees overall it kind of catches their attention that mm -hmm. the ash tree nearest you is mm -hmm. is gonna succumb to this mm -hmm. so well um so I remember the last time we met, Rob was going to look at, go to Tree Keeper and see if there were any large, healthy ash trees that we needed to actually focus on potentially using a preventive treatment on. So am I right that the outcome of that is that there aren't any that we need to, that we That's need to what I understood, say? was that there are these younger ones and then there are these bigger ones, yeah, but please, you. Rich, you know, if you... Well, here's a, for example, here's a 24 inch one, 24 inch mm -hmm. ash. How did, so what, what condition is it described? Condition is good. Oh, where is it? That's on Sylvester? Mm -hmm. It's on Chestnut Street. Okay. Chestnut? That's, yep. that's where I'm there. I don't even know where Chestnut Street is. Yep. Oh, Chestnut Street. Chestnut Street. Not, it's yep. definitely not a Norwood Maple? No, I'm sorry, <laughs> I know where it's it is. It's a national. It's a big one. It's right. My mother-in-law's home. My former mother-in-law's house. Oh. Um, it's a 20-inch one, 18, 14, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, Oh, green. Uh, 10 inch oh. one. That's in poor condition. Oh. So it's more complex than oh. I was thinking. Well, I mean, it's it's more complex. I mean, but I think that uh, you know these were this was done. This is a year ago. Well, actually, probably a year and a half, almost a year and a quarter. So some of these ash trees actually can be in very different condition now. Like the ones on Sylvester Road that were healthy a year and a half ago, two years ago, are now actually in very complete decline. Oh. That needs to be removed. Um, oh. That's not necessarily true to Daniel Ash boards, other boards that have actually in other, uh, you know, droughty conditions don't really like the salt very much. But did Bob say there's about 300 total? Yeah. Yep. Ash trees in Northampton. Yep. Mm. Oh, that are public shade yep. trees. But there's no massive ones. There's no champion yeah. ash tree that I'm aware of. That's, that's There's awesome. nothing on the courthouse wall or something is like that. Mm -hmm. About three percent of our, our stock. Right. Yeah. I think that's significant in and of itself. Mm -hmm. That people should know that we're going to lose three yeah. percent of our stock. They are. Yeah. Um, yeah. But are they so, mostly are they mostly little ones? Uh, it's, you know, like four or five inch. I mean, it's oh. just, uh, there's twelve. They vary in size. I'd have to run a report that I could actually print out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Twelve inch. Mm -hmm. 
can filter it. Yeah. All right. But there are there are some you know some nice looking ash trees that are still you know the ash trees that are on Army Street as an example of trees actually that probably should be removed and we should replace them. But something you know, that actually could be a downtown project. That's another mm -hmm. that's for another discussion. But um, those trees will have to be removed eventually because Emerald Ashmore is actually coming you know really up to connect your River Valley. So. Um, Okay, well, interesting. Us in the loop. I'll um, say one discussion. more thing on Tree Northampton is that um, Rob's been checking trees all over the city. And especially, he was really concerned with the cold and the changes in temperature. And he was particularly concerned for the London plane trees on South Street that were planted. He hasn't checked all the trees on South Street, but he said they looked okay. The buds looked okay. So that's yeah. good news I'll end on. There hasn't been any real fluctuation. Mm. Significant. That would cause them to swell and then get frozen. Yeah. yeah. It takes it's a couple of days. Way warm and then cold. Yeah. Super warm and then cold. Yeah. yeah. So far, so good. So long. I mean, we cold is good. Three, yeah. three week, you know, of yeah. like severely yeah. cold. You know? so. up, it, yeah, really cold. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so After good. the yeah. big push on South Street, I mean, this so many hours and so many people yeah. involved and yeah. so much plant material yeah. involved. You know, a big concern is what's going to happen. You know, how are those trees mm -hmm. going to survive? Mm -hmm. I mean, we took a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. Those spots, some of those spots were pretty poor. Mm -hmm. Not as poor as it sounds like the spots you've been looking at, but. Um, so, all right. Actually, the numbers for ashes, it's 171. Oh, 171. Well, okay. check and see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. March kind of thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna call um, Luke Park, see what they have, and there was somewhere else I was gonna call and ask. I was gonna ask Susan Roy. She seems to have this mental catalog of significant trees. She watches all the trees through the city. Um, yeah. So, I haven't had a chance to ask her to like really think about that and drive around and look at them, but that would be a good project for her. Um, on the private property. So there's the public ones, a good handle of, and then Look Park, I was interested in finding out if they have ash trees. What in. they have, yeah. I'm going to call Ed Ethridge and ask him. And then, I don't know if there's other private entities people know, big landowners. We could look into to see if. Hmm. Um, if anything comes to mind, let me know. Okay. <laughs> this is an ongoing interest to look at this scorch and see. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now I'm finished. Okay. Thank you. Any other business not anticipated by the law? I just have a, a question. Maybe we've already answered this and we can tape it or whatever. But I, I continually think, like when we were walking up and down Pleasant Street, I just can in the in the bike thing, um, bike path thing came up. Um, I just continually think, uh, like, have we figured out, like, other than you know you going and talking to Wayne and saying, hey, any bike path thing, but I think even, you know, like, how do we? Seems like we have to figure out, or maybe this is impossible, how to, like, get in early on these redo projects. I don't know, like, I don't know enough about it to know, I mean, maybe it's impossible given the status of the way things go. You know, I don't really know. But it just seems like if we could figure out something about that to prevent like what happened in Florence and even what happened on Pleasant Street, you know, there could, there could have been a lot more, you know, you know, they redid this whole thing and there's not a stinking Charlie a tree there. You know, there was three put up by the bike yeah. store and there's a one down by the Hocken yeah. Road, but yeah. you know, there was a lot of potential there, you know, and what is left is really, really, really marginal. You know? So I don't know So what Wayne always is punting back is, well, the DPW gets these plans and can can weigh in on an at that early level. So is that true, Rich? And can can you catch it as soon as you, you can, but unfortunately what happens is a lot of these projects that uh, Wayne finds funding for, there is a limited amount of funding, and that mm -hmm. is what happened on Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. So the improvements on Pleasant Street were mainly, um, the, 
the main focus was really pedestrian and bicycle mm -hmm. safety. Mm -hmm. So trees, unfortunately, ended up being, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the project. And of course, if you run into unforeseen issues, which they did, you there's less money to go around. Mm -hmm. and right. The other part of the problem is, is the way that project was put together was kind of put together piecemeal. So it was piecemeal funding from different sources. So it had been on the drawing board for quite some time. And so what happens is that typically the way you the typically the way you would like to see a project move that when you're doing a street over is actually like Hinkley Street. It basically starts with the DPW and ends with the DPW. Mm -hmm. They supervise the whole thing. So everything is in so everything that is done on the street is curbs, sidewalks, blacktop, utilities, tree protection, tree planting. Mm -hmm. So that project in a sense is actually kind of a, is a better success story in a sense because it's really administered by one mm -hmm. department. Yeah. When you have these multiple projects that, and the thing is is that there's not, you know, you have to, you know, Wayne's thinking, and I can't speak for him, but you know, it's, there's a lot of money available to do these projects, mm -hmm. but there wasn't enough money to do all of Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time, the DPW will come back and they will mill and overlay all of Pleasant Street so it's smooth. But that's not going to rectify the issue of not having any mm -hmm. uh, viable uh, tree wells to plant in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if there was funding to do the whole thing, then everything would have been looked at, it would have been appropriately allocated, and then it would have been done. And mm -hmm. that's part of the problem. Um, and he is correct that, that plans do go to the DBW for review, but typically the plans are you usually get about 25% design for them to look at because of all the utilities and all the curb cuts and everything else. Which is pretty far along, right? Yeah, it, it, is, it is far along, and so a lot of the plant material and planting locations have been selected, and then there's, they're basically, the, the plans are really driven by the amount of money that's earmarked for them. Yeah. And that's where, that's where you have to, you know, actually come in and say this, you know, we'd like to see more trees planted here, we'd like to see, you know, this tree doesn't work here, and so we've been able to do some of that. We did mm -hmm. some of that with this Pleasant Tree mm -hmm. Project to mm -hmm. talk about the Bio swells they yeah, had, yeah. Um, but again. I mean, this is why the four of us, the three of us plus Wayne and the mayor had a sit down conversation right here where I showed a little presentation and I made the pitch that someone representing trees needs to be at the table at the very earliest mm -hmm. possible stage of any plan. And here's why. And you know, and I showed a little four minute video on an urban planner just you know, expounding the benefits of trees in, in an urban setting and, and, and planting them in at the earliest stage. And so I feel like we've made that pitch in many ways. And then for a period of time, Todd sat on the bike pit mm -hmm. committee until the 7 a.m. meetings um, were no longer feasible for him. I certainly would be support somebody stepping in and being on that committee again. Um, because I think it's valuable at any stage. And I, I don't even know how much power. I mean, the Bike Pet Commission doesn't have, you know, they're a subcommittee of planning. I, you know, I don't know how much power they yeah. have. But nevertheless, it's, it's another opportunity to weigh mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how many more ways to, to spin this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, again, I came down hard on Wayne when, um, when I found out that these bike pads were being planned without any consideration of, of incorporating trees into the plan. So I, we just keep repeating the message until he gets it, until he really believes it. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm up with suggestions about what else to do. Todd? Well, I mean, the only thing I've seen that works is a, a structured uh, physical design review committee. It's informal, but it has representatives from, you know, building DPW, planning, trees, whatever, you know, open space, whatever you, and they all come to the table at the, the concept phase and then at various phases and make comprehensive comments on proposed physical landscape change to both private property for site plans and special permits and subdivisions, and also for large scale, uh, or just municipal projects of any kind. I don't think that happens here. I think it's more like just passing of, you know, the plans out and waiting for comments that everyone's probably, you know, probably not at the height of their priority list across the board. Mm -hmm. and so a lot of stuff is gonna fall through the cracks. Plus, if you're getting at 25%, the concept work is done. 
-hmm. and now you're down right. into figuring out where utilities are and some nitty gritty engineering stuff and it's right. not going to that plan is not going back to a plan it's right. going to let AutoCAD technicians mm -hmm. pump, pump up the, the design set. Mm -hmm. So the real work usually happens in that upfront design when you still have some trace and you're able to play around with stuff. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a good point. I sat in this room with a meeting uh, with MassDOT and they have their 25% plans designed for the rotary at Hatfield Street and North, Camp, North King. Just oh. an example. That that's 25% design. Mm -hmm. They have all the land takings on there. We sat in a room full of folks that were very upset with the fact that, you know, what, you know, why wasn't this looked at differently? Um, you know, where were we at the concept phase? You know, you're just basically going to come and say that this is what we have to have and this is what we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that it. Unfortunately, I think because of the way that the way that things are funded and the availability of funding and the amount of projects that are that are needed to do different things in the city, I think it's sometimes hard to get everybody at the table mm -hmm. at the very conceptual phase of things. Just because each department has, um, I don't want to say a different view, but they have different priorities. Sure. You know, DPW's priorities are not necessarily the same priorities that, you know, Maine is, is working on. And I think it's much better because of the fact that we have TPC, which kind of also is uh, another driver in there in a sense. Um, What's DPC? Transportation Parking Commission. Oh, uh -huh. but I think I think just constantly reiterating the message. I think, and also, um, you know, the fact that I can actually review plans myself. But in, in the concept phase of things, um, um, I was involved with the uh, all the design group, which was um, very uh, beneficial because that was in the concept phase. So you really had a lot of input. So that really was kind of what Todd was talking about and actually having people come and sit at the table in a large room in a public hearing, multiple, and go through the exercises. Just like we did the exercise with Pulaski Park, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Um, but those were, those were public, not necessarily just internal people sitting at a table and saying this is what we like to see. Yeah. So that concept does work. It's just a matter of trying to get up to speed to make that happen for everything that we're trying to do. It doesn't necessarily always work that yeah. way. Well, I'm going to just keep drilling home the message at every opportunity. Maybe I need to, you know, put a note on my Google Calendar every month to plan an earworm in Wayne that, hey, think about trees when you're, whenever you're... <laughs> Anything new on the yeah. horizon and that we should talk about trees about or something. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I appreciate I everything you're doing. I just, um, yeah, it's you know, it just killed me when we were walking down Pleasant Street. I'm like, okay, now the answer is to go back and retrofit holes. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, what's well, wrong with this picture? If there's no law mandating something and there's no advocate strongly pushing for something, it's not going to get done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's true. Actually, if you don't, mm -hmm. you have to have trees mm -hmm. on every so many square foot of, uh, of hardscape. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's the ordinance, that's what it says, so you have to create the tree wells if you're going to redesign 500 feet of Pleasant Street or whatever. You know, I mean, it's really got to be the driver because what happens is they get, unfortunately because they get, they get thrown out at the end because they have a tendency to be some of the most, either most expensive designs if you're doing infiltration boxes or if you're doing, um, Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing. So you just end up with a tree that's planted in the existing tree well with the existing soil that was there. And, mm -hmm. and you saw from your review of the plans, there's no, I mean, there's no, there's no tree expert in these yeah. design houses. Yeah, They're I know just that. Yeah. engineers <laughs> right. and then a you know, fresh out right. of school LA. Right, right. Yeah. And they pull off a list. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's why, you know, I mean, taking this step here and putting this together was a huge important first step yeah. and now we've got to make sure that people follow it you know that's so this is one small thing that you know that the commission has done to make that to make people you know raises the awareness and raises the bar so i think continually hammering the message home and doing these types of things i think is going to make is going to make a big difference and if you think about how far we've moved in the last three years three years it's been two and a half two and a half we've yeah. really moved oh yeah we've yeah. Moved yeah. Really yeah. Far. So what did the what oh, triggers so someone to make sure that it's being followed? Like you said, make sure that it needs. It, you need to make sure it's followed. Like what triggers someone to know? Oh, something's happening, and are they following this? And well, then what happens? in this case, once this is accepted by the planning board, um, when we get the 
review of the when we get to review, when I get to review the site plan, if the tree species that are on the site plan are not the ones that are approved in this book, that's at that point, or a or a acceptable replacement, that's at the point where I can actually say that's not acceptable or this is acceptable. Okay. Your tree protection diagram is off. You need to go back to you know please uh, use the one that we have provided, so on and so forth. That doesn't get me at the concept level though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually you're not at the concept, you, I'm usually not at the concept level for uh, site plan review. Uh, sometimes I can be at the concept level for folks that actually are trying to uh, uh, build, um, you know, putting homes uh, on the infill mm -hmm. uh, ordinance mm -hmm. that they have, so I'm able to see those. Mm -hmm. um, and then say, that, you know, no, we have this and this and this is what I'd like you to use. The very amount of selection in here, so. So there is some of that, but I think the larger plans, the concept level sometimes can be a little difficult unless it's something like we did with Alta that, you know, was really put together well, so. All right, I am going to have us go around the room now and describe what our own to-do lists are. We'll start over here. Okay, so I will kind of coordinate with Jay and uh, Rob and Rich for the one part of um, Cooley Dick. And I will go onto the spreadsheet and delete the no sites for um, for both Bridge Street and everything. And, okay, and I can remove those and I'll get a count of the available sites and then um, someone will go out on the Bridge Street between Pomeroy and Grant and check that out. Okay. I have to check in with Rob about Bridge Road. And then um, we're gonna, there's, I have the alternative sites too. We'll look at uh, the Gazette site as a top priority of the, like the second tier. And um, then coordinate with Rich to go up to Cooley Dick. Wonderful. So. Sounds good. Ditto on that. Yeah. And uh, I'll get back to the EAB people about setting up the floor. Okay. Um, Ditto what Jen said, but also I have to get the, try to locate a conceptual plan of the bus shelter for Cooley mm -hmm. before we go out there so we can just kind of make sure that we're not adding extra trees that would have to be removed or possibly wouldn't work. Um, continue uh, my quest to finish Trees of the USA before Molly yells at me. Oh, yeah, Molly. Work on updating Tree Keeper and everything else that I normally do in a given uh, work day. Sure, I forgot something. I don't think I have anything on mine right now. I need some tasks. All right, I, I would love to give you a task. Um, so when I look at the, at our 2018 planting plan, um, but actually first let's, uh, I'm assuming, I want to make sure you, because I feel like you've got a list of things that were like all work for you. But when I look at my 2018 planting plan, Molly, I feel like this neighborhood planting pilot, mm -hmm. like the concept needs to take form. Yeah. And um, I know you did some research already with Amherst, mm -hmm. and we talked about it, so like just breathing life into that creating an application, because that'll, that'll creep up on us before we before yeah. we have. Okay. And Sue, um, you're gonna check in with Rob, right, about a couple of different things? Like one is- Yeah, the pruning list for Rich one thing and what else were you thinking um the um orchard in elizabeth streets like oh. starting to really identify if there are setbacks there because i i i'm starting to really love the idea that you guys might have an out for dealing with mm -hmm. setback issues um and also i could <laughs> once again get rid of the extra <laughs> yeah 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 um i mean we certainly want to start with the current city model here and we want it to work obviously but um, I'll talk to Rob about sites it gives people options identified and contacts 
on Orchard and Elizabeth Street. Yeah. And then I was going to get back to the rest of the tree Northampton people about what Arbor Day, from the commission's point of view, is looking like at this point, the sites, and then um, I was going to see if I can reach out to a few people on the ash trees and see if there's anybody who just, I don't know exactly to what end, find out if um, there are any important ash trees around on private property. And talk to Rich about the Tree Northampton website if there's anything else you want on that. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I should come to a, a Tree Northampton meeting. Oh, we thought definitely. Yeah, that should be on my to-do list. I think it would be good to communicate with everybody at the same time. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I am going to um, reach out to Alicia and um, see about coordinating with Jackson Street School. I'm also going to reach out again to Glen Agna. Um, what else am I going to do? You're going to confirm time for uh, Rick Harper and the students? Uh, yeah, it's already, I've already confirmed. I'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if anyone wants to be part of that, let me know. And then I'll get back to Maxie and um, I will connect Maxi to the Tree Commission so that if you all have any thoughts or suggestions as she moves forward. Um, one thing I would like to know, Rich, from you, is if this is going to be an official Smith College City collaboration, is there, do we need to yeah. inform the mayor? Yeah, I think there should or be. Or at least ask. Them. I think we should actually, if Maxi could actually put together uh, some kind of a written proposal. Okay. Sure. And then we can present it to the mayor with the support of the commission and the tree board. Okay. And then right. sign a proclamation. <laughs> Damn. There you go. There you go. There you Two years go. Picture head. is taken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tweet is twitted. Yeah. <laughs> you got to tie your heart. So, so there. Okay. So that's, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that I would make to do? Yeah. Set up your Outlook calendar to, 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 to <laughs> nag Wayne on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. right. If you all have any suggestions about how to, you know, how to be effective as a communicator of this concept, I am all ears. And for Jackson Street, copy brought up too, because you played a role there. Okay. All right. All right, we'll follow up with Lion to get uh, the meeting with the uh, parking and Transportation. transportation. Okay. All right. <laughs> Excellent. What's the status? This has to be approved by the that, city council. No, sure. Has to be referenced in a in a z several zoning ordinances, and also has to be referenced in the planning board uh, rules and regulations for some of And how does that happen? The city council has the or someone has to propose a zoning ordinance change for city council to vote on, and the planning commission has to uh, vote on change to their rules. Okay, so who is so taking the initiative written. of Rich, you are? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm on standby if he should yeah. need me. Okay. Right, Tommy, as long as you wear a sweatshirt and a hat like mine. You're the reliever. I, You're the reliever. I, I'm going home to change into them very soon. <laughs> Relief <picture. laughs> That's hard to imagine. Yeah. You and anything besides Peppy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I think we have wrapped up. Uh, it do, it's a great look on you. Thank you. It really is. No, you totally have the, you have the form. Okay, um, we are looking for a motion to adjourn and then we're gonna get out of here. And by the way, if anyone's interested, um, uh, Governor Candidate Jay Gonzalez is going to be at the Haymarket at 7 o'clock if you want to meet him. I'm not allowed to say those kind of things. I'm not actually not supporting him, but I'm just providing information. Uh, motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.